us worship God. Come, let us worship God. Come, let us worship God. Welcome, everyone. Welcome, everyone. To the love of God. To the love of God. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance, and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves, and we rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and we do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, lead us so that we may live and serve you in the newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Christ Jesus, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us live now in hope. For hope does not disappoint because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Please pray with me the prayer of the day. Teach us Good Lord God, to serve you as you deserve, to give and not to count the cost, to fight and not to heed the wounds, to toil and not to seek for rest, to labor and not to ask for reward, except that knowing that we do your will through Jesus Christ our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our service continues with the readings. From Paul, chosen by God to be an apostle of Jesus Christ, and from Timothy, who is also a follower, to God's church in Corinth, and to all of God's people in Achaia. I pray that God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ will be kind to you and will bless you with peace. Praise God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Father is a merciful God, who always gives us comfort. He comforts us when we're in trouble so that we can share that comfort with others in trouble. We share in the terrible sufferings of Christ, but also in the wonderful comfort he gives. We suffer in the hope that you will be comforted and saved. And because we are comforted, you will also be comforted as you patiently endure suffering like ours. You never disappoint us you suffered as much as we did, and we know that you will be comforted as we were. My friends, I want you to know that what a hard time we had in Asia. Our sufferings were so horrible and so unbearable that death seemed certain. In fact, we felt sure that we were going to die, but this made us stop trusting in ourselves and start trusting God, who raises the dead to life. God saved us from the threat of death, and we are sure that he will do it again and again. Please help us by praying for us. Then many people will give thanks for the blessings we receive in answer to all these prayers. Here ends the reading. Surely for your sake I have suffered reproach, and shame has covered my face. I have become a stranger to my own kindred, 
an alien to my mother's children. Zeal for your house has eaten me up. The scorn of those who scorn you has fallen upon me. I humbled myself with fasting, but that was turned to my reproach. I put on sackcloth also, and became a byword among them. Those who sit at the gate murmur against me, and the drunkards make songs about me. But as for me, this is my prayer to you, at the time you have said, O oh Lord, in your great mercy, O oh Lord, answer me with your unfailing help. Save me from the mire, do not let me sink, and let me be rescued from those who hate me out of the deep waters. Let not the torrent of waters wash over me, neither let the deep swallow me up. Do not let the pit shut its mouth upon me. Answer me, Lord, for your love is kind. In your great compassion turn to me. Hide not your face from your servant. Be swift and answer me, for I am in distress. Draw near to me and redeem me. Because of my enemies, deliver me. to John, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. I have said these things to you while I am still with you. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. This is the word of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We will be spending some time with the Apostle Paul and the Corinthians during the coming weeks. Last week we finished our time with Job, following his journey from prosperity to ruin and suffering, and then finally back to restoration. Throughout that journey, Job remained faithful to God and rebuked his friends who tried to say that Job himself was to blame for his misfortunes. In the end, God comes to Job and then instructs the friends to make an offering and ask Job to pray for them. Job forgives them, prays for them, and his life is restored. While we normally think of patience and unshakable faith when we think of Job, his story is one of relationships. Job's relationship with his wife, who'd questioned his faith, with his friends who were at first supportive and then who became accusatory, and finally Job's relationship with God. And that last relationship evolved over the course of the journey so that it was not the same as it was when the story began. Relationships are at the heart of Paul's letter to the congregations in Corinth. 
Even though the book is called 2 Corinthians, it is thought to be Paul's fourth letter to the church in Corinth. Like the earlier letters, 2 Corinthians is, a, is intended to mend damaged relationships, to console people who are suffering under Roman persecution, and to remind the members of these congregations of what brings them together. Paul's letter was intended to be read in a number of home churches in this region of Greece. Apparently, this particular letter is in response to frayed relationships caused by something that probably could have been phrased better. The letter is also a response to challenges to Paul's apostolic leadership from some of the congregational leaders. Paul is speaking to a context of frayed, uncertain, and damaged relationship. A place where there is a deep sense of being wounded. In today's brief passage, Paul offers listeners grace and peace. Such peace is not how we think about it in contemporary terms. It is a peace of welcome, of belonging, of forgiveness, and of love. Paul offers blessings to God whom he calls the Father of mercy and the God of all consolation. God consoles the people so that they can, in turn, console others. And it is through such consolation that the people can enjoy peace and harmony. In discussing Paul's letter, Lutheran scholar Lois Malcolm wrote, At the center of all this are the sufferings and consolations of Christ, which overflow within and through us. Christ's suffering for for all, not only becomes a means of abundant consolation and grace amid our own suffering, but they so unite us with Christ that we too share both his suffering for others and in the abundant overflow of his consolation that spills over through him and within us and now onto others. Through his words of encouragement, Paul strives to overcome the strains that have been placed on relationships in those congregations. Paul's words of encouragement affirms the gospel message, affirms a refusal to let human conflicts set the terms of relationships with one another. Just as Job's suffering informed shape his relationship with God and with those around him, so too does Paul's suffering and life experiences inform how he presents the message of the gospel to others. To Paul, an apostle is a person sent with a message. And his message to these congregations is that the salvation that we receive through Jesus' suffering on the cross, through his death and resurrection, is not intended to solely comfort us in our own pain and suffering, but rather because this abundant grace flows within and through us, it is intended to be shared with those around us. To Paul, Christ's suffering and consolation forms the basis of an authentic communion, or koinonia as it's known back then, between him and the members of the Corinthian congregations. It is also provides the basis for the relationships between the members themselves. In these relationships, they and, and we are called to share in each other's pain and in each other's joy, and to work to heal the deep wounds whenever they are present. Paul reminds the people that Jesus' death is what brought them together in that place. And that through mercy and grace, they and we have received, it calls us then to view life and relationships differently. To place others at the center and seek consolation in the fact that as a community, we all share in the good and in the bad. 
I don't think it's a stretch to say that the challenges, the problems that Paul writes to in Corinth still exist in one form or another in congregations around the world. Words are misspoken, motivations are questioned, relationships are strained, pain and anger pull people apart. So how do we deal with these challenging relationships? Do we just shrug them off? Do we say it's the other person's issue? Do we rationalize it by saying it's always been this way and it will never change? Or do we reflect on the conflict and seek to heal and keep Christ at the center of our life and at the center of the life of the faith community? If Paul were to write to such contemporary situations, would his words be that much different than they were centuries ago? Perhaps as we worship apart in pandemic-induced isolation, we can consider if our own words, our own actions have led to similar strains or led to people feeling diminished and marginalized. And just as importantly, if we recognize that our words or our actions are being hurtful or divisive, what are we going to do about it? As Paul reminds the Corinthians, we are encouraged to reconcile our differences. That we are called to heal and to mend relationships. That we are called to love. And in non-pandemic, non-social distancing times, to embrace one another. This pandemic is a shared experience. We all feel disconnected from the community. We all feel uncertain about the future, uncertain if the next wave will hit as hard as predicted. But it is also a shared pause button, a button that we can push and then discern what parts of the old normal can be discarded and how we can move forward as individuals, as followers of Christ, and as a community, into a new normal life of worship and ministry. During this time, I pray that you are safe and that you are healthy. I pray that you find joy in the days, the summer days. Amen.
Since we've begun offering our worship services online, we have become a global congregation. We have viewers who have contacted us from as far-flung locales as the South Pacific, Bulgaria, Nigeria, and other locales in the Southern Hemisphere. In recognition of this, we recited the words of the New Zealand Creed earlier this spring. And now, during the remainder of July, we will confess our faith using the words of the Maasai Creed. This creed originated in Eastern Africa and was developed to teach the basics of the Christian faith. So let us now confess our faith. We believe in the one high God who out of love created the beautiful world and everything good in it. He created man and wanted man to be happy in the world. God loves the world and every nation and tribe on the earth. We have known this high God in darkness and now we know him in light. God promised in the book of his word, the Bible, that he would save the world and all the nations and tribes. We believe that God made good his promise by sending his son, Jesus Christ, a man in the flesh, a Jew by tribe, born poor in a little village, who left his home and has, was always on safari doing good, curing people by the power of God, teaching about God and man, and showing the meaning of religion is love. He was rejected by his people, tortured and nailed hands and feet to a cross and died. He lay buried in the grave, but the hyenas did not touch him. And on the third day, he rose from the grave. He ascended to the skies. He is the Lord. We believe that all our sins are forgiven through him. All who have faith in him must be sorry for their sins, be baptized in the Holy Spirit of God, live the rules of love, and share the bread together in love to announce the good news to others until Jesus comes again. We are waiting for him. He is alive, he lives, this we believe. Amen. Next. It was on this day five years ago that we held your hand and told you it was okay if you had to go. Said you were the best in all of us and I thanked you one more time. Settled into bed but got up again when I realized I'd forgotten to say goodnight. Had a feeling that by morning you'd already be gone. And I remember the way the air left the room as soon as you passed on. So many times I wished I could have had you with me through the years. But after everything you'd been through, it would have been more selfish to try and keep you here. Two years in the hospital just after you turned 18 You found out quite early that life could be quite mean You insisted that you honor those who never honored you I'll never know how you did it It's amazing what strong will can do I came to you at 10 years old with nowhere left to go You took me in without a second thought and taught me everything I know about life and love and integrity You fought like hell and loved like mad You taught me I could do, have, and be The things I am, that I've done, that I've had I spent 
Years on winding highways, a broken arm and wrecked a car. The bottom fell out and more than once, I didn't know it could fall that far. But I wanted you to know I made it lots of times, I didn't think I would. But I've got you to thank for everything that's good. continues with the prayers of intercession. Call into unity with one another and with the whole creation. Let us pray for our shared world. Gracious God, your word has been sown in many ways and places. We pray for missionaries and newly planted congregations around the world. Inspire us by their witness to the faith we share. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Creating God. The mountains and hills burst into song, and the trees and the fields clap their hands in praise. We pray for the birds and animals who make their home in the trees and for the land stripped bare by deforestation. Empower us to sustainably use what you have given us. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Reigning God, we pray for our nation's leaders. Increase their desire for justice and equality. We pray for our enemies. Bridge the chasms that divide us and guide authorities to a deep and lasting peace. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Abiding God, care for all who are in need. Today we pray especially for Sandy, Paul, Bernice, Karen, Peter, Tyson, Jake, Klaus, Joyce, Roseanne, Audrey, Helen, as well as all of those we named before you either silently or out loud. For those who are doubting, renew faith. For those who are worrying, provide release. For those who are struggling, ease burdens. And for those in fear, give hope. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Renewing God. Revive your church in this place. Nourish and, and nurture the seeds you have planted, that we might grow as disciples. Replace what has been depleted. Sustain our ministries and deepen relationships with the wider community. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Comforting God. Bring peace and safety to health care workers, emergency service workers, store clerks, and all who work to provide food and the other necessities during this pandemic. May they all remain safe in their ministry to others. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Receive these prayers, O God, and those too deep for words, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. As we have since the pandemic began, we share a sign of peace through sign language. Peace, 
be with you and also with you. So let us share a sign of peace with one another. Because we belong to God, we are bold to pray in the words our Savior taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now receive into your hearts and into your lives the blessings of our Lord. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. God, the Creator, Jesus, the Christ, and the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen. Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God.